I saw the documentary film Flock of Dodos last night, and now I'm here at Discovery Institute to get a refund for Jonathan Wells' book, Icons of Evolution. Flock of Dodos showed me that Jonathan Wells is a fraud for saying that some falsehoods are in the modern textbooks in today's public school classes. I hope they don't try to Mother Hubbard soft soap me. <laughs> See, all I want is the truth and my money back. Discovery Institute, please ring bell for attendant. Hi, I'm Casey. How can I help you? Howdy. I'll uh, try to stay calm. Okay. I am a ticked off customer. I am interested in getting my money back because Jonathan Wells fraudulently accused tax funded textbooks that are used ubiquitously throughout the United States as pushing this heckle embryo fraud. Granted, uh, everybody understands that this has been a fraud, it's been known for decades, uh, but, and Flock of Dodos, which I just saw, admits that it's a fraud, but here's the point. It's not in modern textbooks. I just learned from Flock of, Flock of Dodos that it's not in modern textbooks. The latest textbook they could find was from 1914. So where do you guys get off accusing textbooks of pushing this falsehood by Heckel? Well, actually, the stuff in Icons of Evolution about Heckel's embryos really is true. Well, I, I understand that Heckel falsified things. Embryos really look very different in this stage. Furthermore, in other stages, they look much different. Here's the point. This is not in modern textbooks. That's what Wells says. He rates modern textbooks. It's not in the modern textbooks. I'm interested in my money back, and I don't understand why you guys are falsely accusing the educational establishment. Well, actually, I'm sorry, sir, but you've been misled because the stuff in Flock of Dodos is wrong. Icon's Devolution documents that Heckel's embryos actually was recycled in dozens of modern textbooks, um, and it wasn't actually until 2003 when Discovery Institute and Jonathan Wells bought textbook publishers in Texas. Wait, 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 wait. Are, you're saying that this is in textbooks that are in classes right now? Oh, absolutely. You're claiming that. Absolutely. You're, you're just claiming, on record. It's a pretty simple claim to verify. We can go look at the textbooks right now at my desk if you want. Okay, let's do that. All right, why don't you come with me? <laughs> okay, what, what really ticks me off is that I, I'm, it's a false accusation. I understand. Uh, and I don't understand. So here's your office. Show me your so-called proof. Be glad to. I have right here two shelves of about 20 biology textbooks. Wait, wait, wait. I don't care if they're biology textbooks. I want modern textbooks. These are all modern textbooks, each of which has essentially Heckel's embryo drawings in their fraudulent form. And actually, these are very current textbooks. I think the oldest textbook in this collection is still being used in a classroom back east. So uh, You're saying these are used by students in classrooms now in public oh, schools? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of them. Okay, well, let me, uh, can I look at some of these? Absolutely. Okay. How about this one? got some embryos. Now mark. this is actually an interesting one because what it has is it has Heckel's embryo drawings and what they've actually done is they've colorized them but they still have the same fraudulent data where Heckel fudged the differences between the early stages of the embryos and made them look more similar than they actually are in order to claim that they all share a common ancestor. And so what's going on here is this textbook has simply added some color to the drawings to make them look like, uh, you know, a little bit prettier, but this is Heckel's drawings. So you're saying in real life they look much different than this? No, this is essentially the same as Heckel's drawings, it's just they've added some color. But real embryos look much different at this stage? Oh, real, real, real embryos look very different. That was the problem. Heckel fudged his data. He, he, he basically obscured the differences between the early stages of embryos. So, okay, so I can see how that, those look pretty much the same, and so to the untrained eye I can say, okay, yeah, maybe what I remember Wells writing is right, but how do, I know, how do I know these are really heckles? I mean, it doesn't say these are heckles embryo drawings. I mean, uh, how, how, how do I trust you that these are, these sure. are heckles embryo drawings? No, that's fair enough. We actually have a graphic on our website, evolutionnews.org. Can you look which it up? Can, yeah, I can show it to you right now. This Let's graphic compares heckles actual embryo drawings to uh, the textbook here, Raven and Johnson. It's actually a 2000 Just, textbook. That's this textbook right here? This textbook is on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side is heckles original drawings. So what you can see is that they overlap with Raven and Johnson's yes, drawings exactly the same. almost exactly. And this is a 2002 textbook, so it's very, very recent, most certainly wow. being used today in school. And those are Heckel's drawings? Yes, you can see how Heckel's drawings, the black and white, 
overlay upon these colorized versions almost exactly. Now look at these others. That's another good choice of a textbook. This is actually a textbook Embryos. which was co-authored by the National Academy of Sciences president Bruce Alberts and a Nobel Prize winner. And what they have here is actual Heckel's original drawing, the woodcut that he made in the 1870s. This is the oh fraudulent gosh. drawing in its original form. Entwickelgeschichte des Mensch. Okay. Whoa, 1874. That's right. This is the original. You're Heckel saying this is his woodcut. This is he Ernst Heckel's woodcut. This is Heckel. Oh my gosh. This is Heckel's drawing. Okay. The very drawings that Randy Olson claims are not in modern. Okay. Textbooks. Okay. Let's just say these are in modern classrooms, and that uh, you, you're right. I'll look at these. Uh, but okay, let's just say you're right. Uh, but you guys are critics of uh, Darwinian evolution. How about, are there any Darwinists out there that are honest who criticize this heckle falsehood in the textbooks? Other than just you guys at Discovery Institute. Sure, well have you ever heard of Stephen Jay Gould? Of course. Well Stephen Jay Gould in the year 2000, um, he's actually a very famous paleontologist who was one of the most ardent defenders of evolution in the last quarter of the 20th century. And a few years back, in the actually the same year that Jonathan Wells published Icons of Evolution, he published an article in Natural History magazine where he condemned the use of Heckel's drawings in textbooks. And Gould wrote that we have the right to be both astonished and ashamed by the century of mindless recycling that has led to the persistence of these drawings in a large number, if not a majority, of modern textbooks. Wait, 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 wait. The, the, a century? That's right. This, wait, 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 wait. These were known to be fraudulent for a century? Heckel's drawings have been known to be fraudulent for over a century, and that's why Gould is, he's very upset that they've been recycled in textbooks. Is this any other place? Did, I mean, could this our info be found other places? Absolutely. Actually, the next year, in 2001, the New York Times picked up this story and published an article about how, actually, the National Academy of Sciences President Bruce Albert's textbook contained these fraudulent drawings. And so this has been talked about and was well known in the public record. Okay, so... You guys are right. Jonathan Wells is right, and Olson is wrong. But you know, he seems like such a nice guy, such an open-minded, um, kind of a smart, honest scientist. He, he obviously—I mean, there's something that's not quite fitting here. I mean, obviously, he did not know this before making the film *Flock of Dodos*. Well, actually, Randy Olson claims in the film *Flock of Dodos* that he's read the book *Icons of Evolution*. If he really has read it, and that was a true statement, then he would know that this book documents about a, a good number of textbooks, modern textbooks, that have Heckel's fraudulent drawings. Where? I believe it's actually page 101 to 104, and you can read about the textbooks that have Heckel's fraudulent drawings in there. And so, su supposedly, Randy Olson should have known this. Okay, uh, so you guys know this. Did you do anything to warn him? Like, I mean, well, did you do anything to... To correct Olson? Yeah, actually, after the film came out, we learned that he'd made these misleading claims that the embryo drawings are not in textbooks. We actually, um, Jonathan Wells, who's a fellow here, sent him an email uh, that documented about eight textbooks, modern textbooks, that have Heckel's fraudulent embryo drawings. So Jonathan Wells told Randy Olson that, you know, that, that his film was wrong. Randy knew that. So you're a lawyer who specializes in teaching evolution in the public schools. Did you have any, interac any, any interaction with Olson? Actually, I did. In April of 2006, I debated Randy Olson at Scripps Institution for Oceanography, where I took about 10 of these textbooks and showed them to an audience right after they had watched the film Flock of Dodos. And they were stunned when I presented them with the de textbook drawings of Heckel's uh, embryos. And uh, Randy Olson was confronted there that day, and he actually saw some of these very textbooks with the embryo drawings. Do you know if any other experts informed Olson of the facts while he was seeking input while he was making the film? I know that he has been informed by various people about that the textbooks do contain Heckel's embryos, yet he has persisted in making this misleading claim in his film that supposedly the embryos are not found in modern textbooks. Yikes. So, okay. Got a little cognitive dissonance here. Uh, I'm feeling kind of silly. Uh, I guess... So, you, the facts were known. That's right. And Randy Olson put known falsehoods into Flock of Dodos. That's pretty much right. So I guess it's Randy Olson that's treating his audience like a bunch of dodos. I wonder what else in the movie is bogus. <laughs>